Good evening. Welcome back to uh, Wednesday night Bible study. Uh, our first uh, recorded Wednesday night was last week. We're going to uh, try to record each session uh, live stream for those on live stream. And uh, if you don't get to see it on Wednesday night, you can watch it throughout the week. Uh, leave us some comments and uh, if you have some questions, of course, feel free to comment. Following our uh, live stream on Wednesday nights, after the 15, 20 minutes, then we will have a roundtable discussion. And if you're um, wanting to come to Bible study in-house uh, and be a part of a roundtable discussion, we welcome you. We usually have a great time. It's a time where everyone can... Um, Learn, learn together, and uh, you may be new to the Bible, or you may be a seasoned uh, student of the Bible, but we all study and learn together. Uh, today's lesson is, um, we're just going to start from the beginning. Um, we'll talk about Jesus being baptized, and follow him being baptized, him being led into the desert, into the wilderness, uh, for a 40-day fast. Think about Jesus Christ when um, you talk about temptation. As we see and go through this, we'll see that Jesus was tempted the same way we are. But Jesus Christ, he came as a humble servant. Of course, we know that he was born as a baby, uh, raised as a child, and then following that, of course, he... Uh, was a man in ministry. Um, he was, in the end, of course, which was just actually the beginning for the church, he was uh, a sacrifice. Laid down his life for mankind, for the sins of the world. But let's start. Um, in Hebrews chapter 4, verse 15, the Bible says, for we do not have a high place, high priest who cannot sympathize, sympathize with our weakness, but was in all points tempted as we are, yet without sin. Jesus Christ, the whole time he was on this earth in the flesh, he was a man of no sin. He knew no sin. We have a tendency to think that we uh, present temptation and problems to to our Lord and he doesn't he doesn't know uh, what temptation is like and then we're absolutely wrong um, he knows in all manners Philippians 2 verse 7 but made himself of no reputation taking form of a bond servant and coming in the likeness of men Jesus left glory he left heaven's gate he came as God in the flesh, that you and I can be forgiven of sin. He paid the ultimate sacrifice, the ultimate price with his life. He took the form of a servant, exchange of nature. He exchanged the essence of God uh, for the essence of man. God in the flesh as we speak. He was in the very beginning as we spoke last week. Because of the love of Jesus, the love of God, uh, he wouldn't seek his own uh, glory. He wouldn't seek uh, things of maybe what he would normally need, but he would seek to help others. The Bible plainly tells us throughout the Bible, and, and one of our commandments is, is love your brothers as yourself. And we, we fail to do so. We fail to love one another as Jesus, of course, loved. Jesus was a prime example. Um, he healed. He, he taught. He, he was a, a, a man of Scripture, a man of, of, of the Word. Can you imagine 40 days? Forty days in the wilderness, the hunger, the pain, the grief, maybe even, maybe he had anger, I don't know. Uh, he didn't sin, but 
uh, we know that in, in the Bible that he uh, had anger when he was in the, the temple and, and turned over the tables for what they were doing there. Throughout, throughout Jesus' life, he experienced all emotions and, and all feelings that we have. So nothing that you bring to the Lord is new to the Lord. We know that he, he experienced conflict. He experienced conflicts from the religious authorities. He was harassed, Pharisees and Sadducees, the Roman uh, Empire. We know that um, people um, either loved Jesus or they hated him. Either they liked Jesus or they feared him. And the ones that feared him was those who was afraid that he would take the power away from them. We know that it's a temptation, and, t and that's what we're talking about today mainly is a temptation. Temptation has not lost its power. Satan is resourceful. Uh, he is the source of temptation. And he tempts man probably more so now in these days as ever before. Um, you can tell that by the shape of our world's in. We think of temptation, first it's a, it's a thought. Or maybe someone has said something or presented something and it's tempting. And then you think about it and it goes and it becomes a feeling. And then after it becomes a feeling, it becomes an emotion. And then you begin to think about it and you begin to imagine. And before you know it, it's a stronghold. And the, what started as just a thought or maybe someone just planting a, a, a seed of temptation in your life later on could become a stronghold. And a lot of people know, know exactly what I'm talking about. But uh, let's, let's read and see what Jesus, Jesus faced. We'll start with uh, chapter 3 uh, in your Bibles. And Matthew chapter 3. And uh, Matt can keep up the time for me. And Jesus, when he was baptized went up straightway out of the water, and lo, the heavens were opened unto him. He saw the Spirit of God descending like a dove, lighting upon him. And lo, a voice from heaven saying, This is my beloved Son, in whom I will please. A dove. A dove represents a symbolic represent, representation of purity and innocence. We know that what took place there was a, actually a sign of the Trinity. Uh, three persons. The Father speaks, the Spirit descends, and the Son was baptized. That same Spirit that landed on Jesus in the form of a dove, that same Spirit led him into the wilderness for the 40-day fast. Can you imagine how many of you have actually done a 40 day fast? Some of us can't miss a meal uh, without having problems or complaining or having a bad mood or, or um, acting like our world's come to an end. But I would say I have never done a 40 day fast, but in the desert, uh, you know, it'd be bad you know, in the desert. We know that our lives consist of trials and temptations, mental battles. We know that things come our way, and a Christian life is not an easy life, and uh, the Lord says it wouldn't be. But to battle the temptations, Christ teaches us that we're to acknowledge the written scriptures. Acknowledge the written scriptures. Now, as I read in chapter 4, then was Jesus led up of the Spirit into the wilderness by the temp and to be tempted by the devil. And when he had fasted 40 days and 40 nights, he was afterward and hungered. And when the tempter came to him and said, If thou be the Son of God, Command these stones to be made bread. Listen to what Jesus says to him. 
But he answered and said to him, It is written, Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceedeth out of the mouth of God. Well, Satan wasn't done. Then the devil taketh him up into the holy city and setteth him on the pinnacle of the temple. And saith unto him, If thou be the Son of God, cast thyself down, for it is written, He shall give his angels charge concerning thee. In their hands they shall bear thee up, lest any time thou hast dashed thy foot against thy stone. Satan was tempting him, or trying to test him. Jesus said unto him, It is written, Thou shalt not tempt the Lord thy God. Notice where this was at. He, he was tempting him there over the Kindred Valley. Um, and what do we know about Kindred Valley? It'll be the final battle for the Battle of Armageddon. I think that's right on, on that. Uh, Kindred Valley. Kindred, the Kindred Valley. I may not be pronouncing it right. But anyway, Jesus was tempted twice. Now the third time. And the devil taketh him up into the exceeding high mountain, and showeth him all the kingdoms of the world, and the glory of them, and said to him, All these things I will give thee, if thou wilt fall down and worship me. Satan is willing to give him the cities of the world. You see the condition of the cities in the world today. I don't know who would want, want to take them. But anyway, Jesus said to him, Then saith Jesus unto him, Get thee hence, Satan, for it is written, Thou shalt not worship the Lord thy I mean, thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, thou shalt worship the Lord thy God, and in him only shalt thou serve. Then the devil leaveth him, and behold the angels came and ministered to unto him. Ministers came and ministered unto Jesus. Wow. Then we complain about things in our life and we complain about temptations, and we allow ourselves to go back, and uh, as I told you a few minutes ago, we allow ourselves to go back, think about things. Our mind wants to stay busy thinking about the things of, of the world. Bible, the Bible plainly tells us that we're not of this world. We're just passing through temptation. Then we begin to have feelings. You say, well, how can you have feelings about sin? Ugly sin. Well, think about something in your life where you know that the, the temptation has led you into sin. You'll see that you had feelings. You also had emotions. Then you begin to think about it in your mind. The imaginations, you think, well, maybe just a little bit. Maybe I'll, I'll try that for just a little bit. And maybe you think that this feels good. Or you have happy emotions. The Bible plainly tells us that sin will take us places, keep us longer than we want to stay. Then you have a stronghold. You have chains. Jesus plainly said that we're to stay in the Word. We're to, to know the Word. And we're to be able to reply back when things come into our life. You know, the Bible says that Scripture tells us that the Lord won't put anything on you any more than you can handle. And the Lord is with you through all things. It's great that we can cry out to the Lord in our time of temptation. Jesus spoke to the people. And he say, I say unto you, and he would minister to the people. 
he would teach the people and he, he would show the people um, the will of the Father. And that's what he was showing us, the will of the Father. Through this. He was pursuing the Father's will that he would go through this. And he said, I say unto you, but you notice there was a big difference. He said, it is written when he spoke to Satan. And in the Greek, it is, has been written and stands written. So we can stand on the Word of God. We can stand on what Jesus did. His example for us. Thank you for being with us. On Wednesday night, we hope that you will come out and be a part of a roundtable discussion. Uh, we have a wonderful time, and oftentimes we get to eat. But uh, do come out and be a part of it. Oh, well, Matt just reminded me to, uh, you can tune in to YouTube as well. Um, this will be live stream to YouTube. Be with us on Sunday morning at 11 o'clock for live stream for our service.